So topic number one today is uh, wrestling promotions have always faced a balancing act between giving fans what they want and booking matches that will be the most entertaining and compelling. On one hand, I guess it's important for promotions to listen to the desires of their audience and give them the type of matches that they enjoy. But on the other hand, promotions always have had kind of a responsibility to deliver high quality entertainment and compelling storylines that keep fans engaged. So after watching AEW Dynamite yesterday, that once again featured zero in-ring appearances from MJF and acclaimed, the question I wanted to propose for everybody today is, do wrestling promotions owe it to their fans to give them more of what they want, or should they focus on booking matches uh, that they believe will be most entertaining and compelling? <clears throat> now, my answer to this is having your top wrestlers on television every week is is essential for maintaining the popularity and success of those said wrestlers, right? And, and of your promotion, right? Whether it's AEW or WWE, having your top guys on TV is what keeps, especially casual fans, coming back, and it keeps and maintains the popularity. Uh, when wrestlers are often the face of the company, they're, they're responsible for, for drawing in the audience. So when they're not there, how can you how can you pin the ratings on them? If MJF isn't in the ring, if the acclaimed aren't in the ring, and I'm not saying they have to wrestle, but MJF being up in like a skybox waving down at, at Brian Danielson, I just I don't know if that's the most effective way to use Brian Danielson. Because by regularly featuring MJF on television, AEW can assure that he stays on the top of mind for the fans, right? They continue. He can build up a fan base. While MJF is a big deal within the IWC and the AEW world, I don't know what his drawing power is outside of that that small little niche world and so you have to continue to put him in front of the faces every week is a new opportunity to gain new fans and every week there's some casual wrestling fan who just maybe today's the week i watch aew and they watch it and they don't get to experience the acclaimed and they don't get to experience mjf so having no top wrestlers on t uh or, or having your top wrestler on television every week allows for your promotion to tell those more complex storylines. You, you have more opportunities to showcase the personalities and their abilities of, of the top talents. I use Bray Wyatt as an example, right? <clears throat> Bray Wyatt has to be on television every week if we're going to drip out this story 30 seconds at a time. So, so every week that, that Triple H or WWE doesn't feature Bray Wyatt or doesn't move that story forward, it's a missed opportunity to showcase his personality and his ability to be a top talent. And, and overall, you know, having your top wrestlers on television every week, that's crucial for keeping fans engaged. We live in a world where there is so much content to consume that if you don't, you can have one or two bad weeks and people go, I'm going to watch something else. Yeah, I'm a Yellowstone fan now. Oh, I'm a Marvel fan. Oh, I'm going to watch that new DC movie. I'm going to watch Monday Night Football. There's always something else to watch. So when you don't put your best foot forward, you don't have your best wrestlers on television every week, it, that, that's the only way to keep the fans engaged. I went to an AEW show last week. I talked about it. We went to AEW Dynamite. I took my two daughters. They both left the show saying, what the fuck was that? Where was MJF? Where were the acclaimed? And I, and I get, right, that, that sometimes these guys get pushed to rampage, but we got to quit pretending like AEW right now is just killing it in, in, the, in, in the ratings to, to the point where they can afford to, to drag their talent out across two different television shows. Because I've been thinking a lot about AEW lately and their ratings and how their ratings have been dropping. And I definitely equate that when I watch on a consistent basis to just piss poor booking decisions. Don't, don't get me wrong. I understand that AEW wants to focus on their core audience. And that makes sense. From a business standpoint, it makes sense. You've got to give your core audience the content they want. But at the same time, 
You have to consider what the casual fans want too because these viewers may not be as invested in your product. They may not know the backstory, but they can still make up a a quite significant portion of your audience. So if all your booking decisions only appeal to the IWC and they don't appeal to casual fans, they're not sticking around to watch. They don't make it to the main event. And the problem is it works both ways. If your first hour is phenomenal and your last hour drops off, they go, ah, well, I remember the beginning was pretty good, but all I remember when I turned it off was how bored I was by the last four or five matches of the night, right? It's about finding that balance between catering to the hardcore wrestling fans And appealing to the casual audience. And I think that is what got Triple H all of the the love early on in the creative switchover from, from him to, from Vince McMahon to him, was that it looked like he was going to be able to cater to, the, to that balance. I think over time we've learned a little bit that that may not be entirely true, but that's how you maintain strong viewership is you have to, you have to find, and it is a balancing act. You have to find the balance between the two. And and it's possible. It is possible. But it's also possible that WWE has created problems in its booking by doing the exact opposite of, uh, or maybe the exact same as what uh, AEW does. And that is if AEW is trying to appeal to a hardcore audience, WWE is trying to appeal sometimes way too much to a broad casual audience. And and I think that is evident when you start talking about WrestleMania 39 and you start talking about the way that WWE has basically waited on the rock and John Cena to make commitments to WrestleMania 39 because relying on these two top wrestlers to carry that event, because that's what they've done here. They've thrown storylines to the fucking wind when it comes to most of this because they are banking on the fact that they are going to have Stone Cold Steve Austin. They're banking on the fact that they're going to have John Cena. They're banking on the fact that they're going to have The Rock. And and WWE might have put itself in a difficult position if one or both or all three choose not to participate this year. That could, I mean, that literally could leave WWE scrambling to find suitable replacements in matches on the card that are that are extremely important, which then leads to a, ba- a, a basically a bunch of Plan Bs. You get a bunch of Plan Bs. You get a bunch of backup ideas and subpar matches, and, and it's gonna it'll lead to a, a weaker overall event. WrestleMania thirty eight felt like a solid event because it was pretty locked in. On the road to WrestleMania. WrestleMania 39 is a nightmare. Right now, our major storylines are the bloodline, Sami Zayn, and they're not even figured. Sami's not really figured to be in the main event of WrestleMania. He might do something with Kevin Owens and the tag team titles, but but we don't like there is we have not even laid the seeds for what is supposed to be the main event to WrestleMania, and we're hitting January. I mean, we're hitting January, right? waiting on these guys to commit. How many, how many opportunities have we missed out on? How many stories could have been booked towards WrestleMania and had six to seven months of buildup? Same with Charlotte Flair. If they're waiting on Charlotte Flair to come back, like all of this waiting, waiting around for these people to commit, waiting for these people to come back, it's not going to lead to success. So whether it's AEW or WWE, these problems exist on both sides. One side catering to the IWC, the other side trying to cater to just this broad, the broad global market is what WWE does, right? They, they want Logan Paul. They want Pat McAfee. And while sometimes those things pan out, right? Logan Paul panned out. Pat McAfee panned out. Sometimes those things can go horribly wrong, right? And sometimes John Cena and The Rock just don't fucking show up. And you got to ask yourself, like, do real WWE fans, real WWE fans who watch 365 days a year, do they really care if Cena and The Rock return? Or would they be just as happy if Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes were in those positions? I'd argue that some of them may be more excited if Seth Rollins was in a title match than The Rock. But that but this is what you know, this is just this polarized booking. But by waiting on The Rock and John Cena to commit to WrestleMania 39, WWE created problems. 
The same problems that Tony Khan creates by not putting MJF and the acclaimed on every episode of AEW Dynamite. It's just the truth, right? Wrestling shows tend to work best when the booking is geared towards what the fans want rather than what just the creative minds think is the most clever story and what the fans need and they get way too involved and way too meticulous and they make it way too complicated. And this is because ultimately the fans, they're the ones who are paying to watch the product. Hey, Tony Khan, if you can't fill up an arena consistently, if you can't sell out consistently, maybe we need more MJF. Maybe we need the acclaimed every week. Maybe those are the stories that you should be focusing on rather than appealing to the IWC strictly every week. Keep, keep everybody invested. When the creative minds behind the scenes have their own ideas about what they think the fans need, they, they have to remember that, that it's what the fans want. It's not what they need. Kofi mania happened because of what the fans want, right? Sami Zayn is kind of happening because of what the fans want. It, it wasn't clever booking. It wasn't clever storytelling. The fans made it happen. So by booking matches and storylines that are in line with the desires of the audience, WWE and AEW, they can create more enjoyable stories and experiences. People like to leave wrestling happy or at least happily surprised something bad can end the show but you better make sure that it's something that's going to have everybody talking but ultimately wrestling shows work best when 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 the booking is geared towards what fans really want as as this is what keeps people coming back for more